Seven and a half years after uh, this administration started using drones, how would you characterize uh, their importance in the struggle against al-Qaeda uh, and now Islamic State? Uh, have they been, as I think many people would look at this administration and say, this is the central weapon in the battle against these groups? Uh, of course, others are calling it a very controversial position. I'd like to hear your balance sheet on how vital this has been to the United States. And those statistics that were recently put out, they refer to counterterrorism operations carried out by the United States outside of areas of active hostilities. And uh, they include not just drone, it could be fixed wing aircraft or something else. So that's the, the aggregation of all of those operations. And the, the drones, the predators, the Predators, Reapers, uh, are tremendously capable, um, or capable platforms that provide a variety of capabilities to the U.S. government uh, as they are operated um, overseas. Uh, tremendous uh, ISR, uh, which is Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance, mm -hmm. because they have the ability to watch areas with full motion video, as well as to uh, have technical collection capability that they can be in an area that may be denied to us otherwise. They are not manned, although they are piloted re remotely. Right. And they have what's called persistent dwell, which allows there to be the acquisition of that intelligence, either visual or technical, mm -hmm. for a sustained period of time, which allows you to have much greater fidelity about what it is that's happening on the ground. Those platforms give the opportunity to use the intelligence that it acquires and correlate it with other intelligence that you may have, whether it's human intelligence on the ground or other technical capabilities. And so it is that interaction between those intelligence feeds that's very, very powerful. And then also these platforms have the ability to deliver ordnance onto a target. And the fact that they can uh, watch in a persistent fashion on a target, they have the ability then to observe exactly who is there and make some determinations and decisions about who it is. And that's why the president has come out and has said that we need near certainty of the target, who it is, as well as near certainty that there'll be no collateral. Now, none of this is risk-free, but these platforms have been able to use that, intel that great intelligence capability, marry it then with the kinetic capability, so it's called fine, fix, and finish, that the U.S. government, and these are platforms that have been integrated into the U.S. military for quite some time. And it has such precision, and they have laser-guided weapons that allow those remote pilots to be able to target uh, the individual or, the, uh, or the, the location with tremendous precision as well as be able to observe whether or not the situation on the ground has changed from the point of a trigger to the point of impact. And if the situation has changed, and if there are civilians who happen to wander into that field of fire, the remote pilots have the ability to redirect, to shift cold that ordinance. And so they can continue to watch over the target while that strike takes place as well as to look at it afterward and continue to observe it from the standpoint of what the battle damage assessment is going to be. So it's a tremendously capable instrument uh, for intelligence collection as well as an instrument of war that not just the United States but other countries now are using. It uh, helps to protect uh, pilots. They're not flying in these areas. Uh, it has limitations, but as the technological advances are incorporated into one's military, the drones, the predators are uh, key to making sure that we are able to carry out these operations when necessary, but with the greatest accuracy and precision.